Happy Halloween if I don't see you before then. Remember, Halloween is a holiday for everyone, not just pagans. It's also a Christian holiday and it's also a, pagan, a holiday for anyone that likes tradition. Uh, don't get too hung up on the date because it was originally would have been set to a 13 month lunar calendar and uh, the solid conflicts between the Georgian and the Gregorian calendar. I generally celebrate the season of Samhain within the lunar cycle and how it falls. So we're actually around the full moon now, so it's perfect. So uh, you would begin Halloween when the, the the lunar cycle begins. I think that's how our, our ancestors would have celebrated as a festival anyway, not just the day. So I hope you're all keeping well. I'm back from England. Uh, it was a bit of a long, arduous jury back, uh, but uh, I made it in the end and had a great time there. It was great catching up with everyone and I so much love and it was wonderful to see AV13 back and AV back and we all got a lovely photograph ourselves in front of uh, Ian O'Crane at the end. So, it was, you know, his his spirit was everywhere. You could feel the man. He's, you know, he's working for us on the other side and he's here with us and you can feel it. You can feel him. He's everywhere. He doesn't feel gone to me at all. Not at all. If anything, he feels stronger than ever, which goes to show you charisma, baby. Now, um... Uh, it just probably be a very long video. There's a lot to talk about, but the first thing I want to talk about is, I guess, the Irish Times this week produced an article with Varadkar, the cartel regime boss here, saying that we're, we've we've reached our our maximum limit with with you know bringing people into the country from outside the country, and it has to it has to be halted now. Something that if you said ten days prior, both him and the the new the Saint Irish Times and the establishment as a whole would have called you a a far right you know nationalist, a, a Nazi, all these all these awful names you don't deserve. They would have called you that, and here they are, at eleven days, nine days later, here they are, saying what people were saying two weeks ago and being called names for. It's it's it, and and it's it's gaslighting in the extreme, and it's it's happening in you know they're all getting their orders from central, from central operations unit whatever it is, so for instance Germany said the same, Sweden has said the same, France hasn't yet because they have that nut job Macron in charge, uh, Italy has said the same, but the globalists have kept, have kept attacking Italy, with uh, floods of invaders, uh, deliberately deliberately to spite them you know hitting their islands with like, you know, basically flotillas of in invading forces. And uh, that's just, you have to remember that they're the troops working for the the globalist. You see, you see there's, there's a, we'll talk about other things there, but it's all suddenly stopped because the orders have come. Now, if you ever want to know who is a government agent, who is a government spook, who is a government spy, who is a government operative? Now, right now, you know, because the left, the ones who would have caused called us all these horrible names last week, have now all gone silent on that on that, because the left in Ireland, in Ireland, the left is exclusively the intelligence services, and all those left wing activists, people in trade unions, they're all the intelligence services working on behalf of the globalists against the citizenry, the NGOs, and all. They've all gone suddenly silent on this. When if they really did care about immigration matters and stuff like that, they'd be marching in the streets. No, they were only there to s suppress any kind of growing nationalist movement. Patri I wouldn't even word nationalist movement, patriotic movement in Ireland. Patri because it's not about the government and the state, the nation state. It's about the law of the country, and its culture and its 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 heritage and its people. And uh, so they own the, the left in Ireland only existed to attack people who loved Ireland and that's not an issue and that's not an issue anymore so basically all the left-wing activists the ones going around screaming calling names they've been deactivated uh, because they are all every last one government agents and all you have to do is look at where they work they're employed by universities uh, they are children uh, grandchildren of senior cabinet ministers and previous governments uh, which were on the establishment they're all establishment and they're just continuing on the employment that's traditional to those families working on behalf of the regime against the citizenry 
So, and they've all gone quiet, suddenly very quiet and all this stuff, because the orders have come in from their central operations unit uh, to tell them to be, it's not an issue right now, go quiet. And so, uh, you want to know who a spook or a, or a spy or an agent is? It's basically the left at this point. Anyone on the left, from even on moderate left, from trade unions all the way through to the SJW activists, it's all, they're either patsies or direct government agents. The ones who are members of families in the establishment and who are now left-wing activists, 100% operatives working for the government. Same as the ones who are involved in universities and trade unions. All the way through to the patsies. But even the patsies have figured them out because those people in recent months were not getting the numbers around them that they used to get because people have figured out hold on a second his father was the minister of this her father was the head of some university top university all the stuff and here they are telling us they're trying to make out their 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 activists against the regime when they're they're the products of it and some of them are still working in it so even so that that's probably one of the reasons too i think everybody's figured out this but this point that anyone from the sjw oak and tifa side is a government agent it's as simple as that so uh, that, that 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 scam isn't working for them anymore. That's they all they've all been decommissioned now. A lot of them are needle crafted anyway, so they'll be dead in the next few years anyway, or de heavily developed de debilitated. Now, why I was at AV thirteen, I got talking to a lady there who is a mortician or a funeral up ranger or something in in Scotland, and I had to ask her the obvious question, and she says, "Yes, through the roof. It's never been busier." And the biggest one is Mysterious Turbo Seas. Tur Turbo, the song Turbo Lover by uh, Judas Priest should be redone as Turbo Sea. And uh, Turbo Big Seas. Out of nowhere, lots of young people. And we all know what that is. And they're definitely in a worried position now. They definitely are. And it, I, don't, I don't think they wanted this this quickly. I think the, the thing they were after was sterilization. Uh, it was, was, was basically population reduction through sterilization, well, hence why the spike proteins settled in the reproductive organs of both male, male and female, and we have fertility rates dropping all over the world, but I don't think they expected this. This was, this was uncomfortable for them. It's, you know, especially when it's like the sort of like the things that they don't want to die, in my, like influencers, sports people, and so on, pop stars. And it puts them in a dozzy position because they were in the middle of a global coup. They still are. They take the planet over. Uh, but Russia has derailed that for them to a, a huge extent. And uh, the Irish media is still reporting that Russia is losing. It's, it's staggering. It's absolutely staggering. The Irish mainstream media is still reporting that Russia is losing. And the, Rus the Russians have run out of troops. And they have all these experts, you know, who are from universities around Ireland, all establishment, lefties, just spewing bullshit. They don't know is true or not. But it's what the government wants to hear. And what the, especially Ireland is run directly by the Clinton Foundation. No matter who you vote for in Ireland, you get that you, especially with Sinn Féin, you're voting controlled by the Clinton Foundation. And so the Clinton Foundation sent out its orders. This is what's making it so difficult for them. Uh, you have, because of all the knuckle, stra knuckle scraping lefties in this country and all the scum who support Celtic FC, uh, Glasgow Celtic, there's, a, a, there's a, a bizarre sympathy for the Palestinians cause that is just bizarre. It makes no sense. You know, let me ask you this one. If Ireland was in trouble with the Palestinians care about us, they wouldn't give a flying fuck and you know that. Okay, and also you know me, I'm totally against telescopic philanthropy and all that stuff. You know, if I if I was a dictator of Ireland, I wouldn't even have a Department of Foreign Affairs, or no, I I would outlaw all overseas aid unless it was something like a real crisis, and you know, like a, a natural disaster, and that wouldn't include African dictatorships starving their people in wars. Uh, that wouldn't include that, but uh, it would be something like a horrible thing, like a tsunami or something like that. And that'd be one off age package, and that'd be it. And any kind of help that'd be sent. Uh, I, I should, you know, if that's why it's dictator of Ireland, which I'm not, I should, I should actually, I, sh I should, I should be dictator of Ireland. I'd be a, a good, I, I'd, I'd be a good dictator of Ireland. I'd be a benevolent dictator of Ireland. And uh, yeah, I would. 
But yeah, so like the lefties. Okay, let's let's talk about this. If I was the dictator of Ireland, right? What what would I do? The first thing I'd do would be take Ireland out of the European Union. I would um, massively expand the military. I would in order to protect the country from any kind of shenanigans. I would re I would restore normal relationships with uh, Russia and Israel, and uh, I would uh, put. I would have a constitutional and democratic moratorium. I would say, I say a, a ten or eleven year gap before people, maybe longer, maybe a nineteen and twenty year moratorium on democracy. Maybe twenty years of people with no vote elections, and uh, all the political parties and everyone so currently sitting in government would be would lose their job, and all political parties would be abolished. I would make it so. If your grandparent, par parents or grandparents were, were elected members of government, you could never stand for office. That would be, that'd be another one. Uh, we would have an anarcho-capitalist economy where there'd be as little control of the economy and interference by government as possible with a strong emphasis on indigenous industry and small business. I uh, wouldn't have any problem with the overseas companies. I'd keep the corporate tax low. I don't have a problem with that. That doesn't bother me at all. And so there wouldn't be any problem with all those uh, multinationals coming in. But there would be no interfering in public policy. If you come here to open your Microsoft microchip place, big pharma, whatever, you just employ people. And that's the end of it. I would... Uh, and you, you you know and you get your tax breaks and then you get out of the country you, you don't you know we don't interfere with us we don't interfere with you i would uh, <clears throat> i would cut the civil service by a fifth and uh by, like so by four fifths there'll be only a fifth of it left and um, i would introduce something like a universal basic income for people who are unemployed but it wouldn't be called that it would be called something like uh you would be employed as a steward of the state and your job would be to you're not sitting at home dust and collecting welfare. Your job would be to help the community in whatever way you could. I would abolish, I would have pensions means tested, state pensions. There's no way someone who's a multimillionaire from being in the civil service or in business should be collecting a state pension and definitely not a free transport pass. That would only be for, you know, means tested and disabled people. And speaking of which, all those people that live in one-off houses, you're not, you're not going to destroy counties like Donegal and Clare anymore with horrible houses all over the landscape destroying it. You will no longer get mail delivered to your house unless you're disabled or over 65. In fact, I would triple the number of rural post offices. If you want your mail, you go to the rural post office. That would be, uh, that, uh, I would encourage clusterings of towns. I would begin all infrastructure projects immediately. That would include uh, a, a, a new road between Cork and Limerick, uh, the Dublin Metro, Dublin Underground, and the expansion of the rail system back to, not to what it was, because most of those tracks were useless, back to uh, double track all the single track lines, electrify everything, and make rail transport the basis of people moving. And then, you know, no more new motorways, just a road. We've got too many motorways anyway. And uh, for the small country, lots of uh, really good quality type end roads. So dual carriageways, a brand new dual carriageway with all the bypasses between Cork and Limerick and anywhere else it needs something like that. I wouldn't have any lobbyists in the government. Then we would begin the justice thing. Anyone who's committed more than 20 crimes will be sentenced to death. I'm not joking. Anyone who has committed more than 20, why should we keep you alive? You're a career criminal. You will never be reformed. And you will also, you will, you, until your dying day, you, anyone who's attacked an elderly person in their home and injured them and robbed them, death sentence. Uh, abortion would still be okay, and I wouldn't have a problem with that. Homosexuality would be fine. Whatever, in fact, whatever consulting adults want to do behind, you know, behind closed doors is their own business, including transitioning once they pay for it themselves. And it's not covered by the state. And... All the woke stuff out of school to be taken out and replaced with like intelligent sexual education. Um, education would be massively reformed. University is not for everyone. University does not teach people anymore, it instructs them. So you'd have an education system where kids would be given the basics. Read, write, and homeschooling would be encouraged, actually very much encouraged. Uh, reading, writing, arithmetic, the things that you need to get by in life. And then if they need to pursue things further, if they're interested in science, then they go to college. If they're interested in astronomy, 
architecture, anything. Uh, and of course, it'll be paid for, it'll be free, but it'll only be for people who will come out with worthwhile degrees that will enhance their lives as people and society is a better place. So therefore, it won't be any, it'll be humanities and sciences. It won't be gender ideology degrees or anything like that. And uh, the whole nature of education, the whole Prussian system would be stopped here and a brand new implemented uh, education system put in. The justice system likewise uh, would also be, we would have the, the death penalty extended to and severe prison sentences for white collar crimes. Something that there's almost no punishment of white collar crimes in the history of the state. They don't even have court cases, they have tribunals. All bullshit, all nonsense. And then after... Uh, the country's been modernized, well, it's all been properly with a proper infrastructure fixed up, proper healthcare system, and uh, of course, a more complete ban on immigration except for people of Irish heritage and people with degrees. You can come from anywhere in the world. Uh, pork establishes the national food, no national religion, a secular constitution with extreme protection of religious and spiritual rights. So if you want to worship a horsefly called Eric or be a Catholic, you'd be well taken, you'll be well protected by the law. Your, own, your spiritual life will be your own business, but you will not take it into the schools. You will not take it into the hospitals. You will not take it into the public domain other than through your relevant churches. Uh, that would there would you know a few things like that that basically yeah uh, we'd have a wonderful country I think the military would be expanded with the with the main not only to protect the nation itself from invaders and I'm talking about massive military I'm talking about the works jet fighters serious battleships uh, a, a standing army of about two hundred thousand troops heavily trained and well paid how do we pay for it all well we. we there's lots of ways to pay for it all, but it, it, the changing of the culture would be the first one. We would move away from this materialistic culture. We'd be encouraged to move away from it. Now, that's not to say we give up all our goodies, but we have something like they have in France, where there's still a great dependency on home cooking, you know, all this kind of fast food culture would all end. You know, this would have to end. People would, you know, a kind of a national, you know, Epicurean cuisine type culture would you know of really support the farmers in producing not just cows eu quotas but actual every agricultural thing massively increase the fishing industry this is this is why we we need the uh, a massive navy that will blow that will actually blow foreign ships out of the water well give them a warning of course uh, and will blow them up if they don't, if they if they if they try to keep on fishing, and that would include our territorial rights right into mid Atlantic. So the Irish water rights are enormous. So on the margins out there, if you're a Chinese or Spanish trawler, there will be a submarine or a battleship waiting for you, in case you get think you can just fish our waters out. This would include mineral exploration. There would also be massive investigations in who has sold our country out. This is one of the, when we can't punish many of them because they're dead, but their sons and daughters are involved in politics and bureaucracy here. And this way we have a complete ban on two generations away from someone who held office. Your dad or your grandfather or your grandmother or grandmother was in a sitting par parliamentarian. You will not be allowed to run for election. This is how we smash the... Uh, the uh, I know I know I'm talking about Irish stuff here. It's probably Robert Bourne, the rest of you, smash these uh, dynasties, political dynasties. Another thing too would be the complete redrawing of political boundaries. The county count, the counties would be abolished completely. Now they can have the sports and cultural things, but in terms of actually administrative things, they were British things that were developed by the British military to control the country, and that they they they're, they're an abomination just in that level. This wasn't Sligo. This was the the Barony of Laney, and the British as British military made it into the County of Sligo, so that would all stop. We'd have a uh, we I'd restore the five kingdoms of Ireland: Ulster, Munster, Leinster, and Connacht, as uh, similar to Landes in Germany or cantons in, in Switzerland, they would have their own regional government that would raise local taxes and, and do their own local spending. So if they fuck up, it's, you, see, you have a current situation where you have half-witted, mindless Gombians in the west of Ireland who cannot run their own, their own constituencies. And then when it all goes wrong, they go, sure, it's the government in Dublin, boy. 
they're holding us back like this kind of fucking thing that will all stop it'll they be you know that if you live in mayo and uh they fuck up something really bad they you, they won't you can't point the, the, the finger at dublin anymore they'll point the finger at castle bar and it will make local politicians extremely um you know wary of their own local power because that's the only thing that could control it and again any kind of political corruption or white collar corruption is it will be death penalty it has to happen it has to happen the, the these people are psychopaths who are drawn to these things and they will never change and uh of course the final one uh the covid court of genocide which would not only then to ireland anyone involved in the actual imprisonment of the irish people would face punitive um justice right up to death penalty in the case of people who proposed uh anyone who was in needlecraft at having their life their rights taken away you all know who you are out there politicians that i'm talking about <clears throat> A mandatory sentence of 20 years for anyone who signed the Vax ID pass. And uh, then we start investigating links between politicians, media and Big Pharma. If there's a link found there that suggests they were responsible for massaging public policy towards the lockdowns or the, towards the needlecraft. Executions. I'm not, I'm not joking. I'm completely serious. I'm completely serious. You, you've committed genocide. You've murdered. And even if it wasn't with the, the people from the Needlecraft, you, you caused huge amounts of suicides from during the lockdowns and people losing their business or their mental health collapsing. You've damaged a generation of children. The COVID court of genocide would extend beyond their borders. It would issue warrants for the arrest of people like Bill Gates and the heads of Pfizer and the heads of the, the, the World Health Organization. And... A Mossad type operation will be put in and these people if they're found guilty in Ireland we will have no problem employing our foreign agents to go overseas to get them we'll have that's what's the problem uh, no problem you'll be allowed to be a Muslim Christian Hindu atheist to all your hearts content once you do not once you do not impose your religious beliefs on others once you keep them private to yourself if you even have a suggestion and also to be limits on who can sit on councils in terms of religion. There, there will be no diversity quotas, but there will be cultural quotas. So you can't have a town council or city council loaded with Muslims like you get in England. Next thing you know is it, 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 Sharia law, by the, that won't be allowed to happen. There will have to be a demographic makeup. It'll, it, it, it'll be allowed to naturally flow by itself, but if it reached a critical mass, it has to be a national demographic makeup. So if, you know, Muslims are 10% of the population, they'll be 10% of the councils. Uh, but again, but if they get, they're allowed to get in and there's no, it's the same thing with like of Catholics. If Catholics are 60 or 70% of the population practicing, so it's say 50%, then we have that 50% max on councils. So no, we have a situation of checks and balances where no religion, no political ideologies uh, would be. I would also have children who are me, their parents have this decreed they're non-binary, or non-gendered, or attempting to transition their underage children. By the way, an adult will be from seventeen on. So uh, the, the age of consent, the age to have an abortion, the age to serve in the army, the age to drink, the age all that stuff will be back. This I, I'd re stop things like a smoking ban. It should be up to businesses to do that themselves. And I don't, I've never smoked in my life. That I hate and I hate smoking. But it, that was a a major part of it. Uh, would have an emphasis on indigenous, uh, not indigenous, but on, on homegrown things. I would have much of the funding removed from the GAA because it prevents Irish athletes from competing on the world stage. Instead of being in the Olympics or playing soccer or rugby and bringing Ireland glory on the world stage, they're rotting away in some parish in Kilchama somewhere on a Sunday afternoon because they all, they're all they all been brainwashed to play bog ball. Uh, that, there would be no more special consideration for that thing. That would be that would be just another sport and people would be encouraged to partake in sports or best athletes that will bring Ireland gold medals in the Olympics and, you know, 
awards in soccer and all this stuff and rugby and world games. The GAA has is the major reason why Ireland has never won a, wo a world competition, I think, in anything, you know, other than going to big medals. And uh, in, in team sports, we haven't won anything, I don't think, uh, at any level. Uh, other than, the, I think, the rugby and the European Cups, and that's it. And, uh, and a country that's based on kindness and respect. That by the time the moratorium, the constitutional and democratic moratorium is over, people have been encouraged to be stewards of their nation, of their culture, of their country. Uh, respectful of people who live here know that there's if they tried the days of the gone being an acute horror is the day of means executions and firing squads and that's will look be looked upon as a as, as, as a shameful thing that had to be dealt with it you know uh, i would make it illegal to call anyone any politician by their first name they would have to actually address the honest or friends with them but in terms of actual when you see journalists calling them by their first names and all that oh the press that would the abolishment of rte completely uh the shutting down of it and the selling off of all their assets and tg Cahar made the national tv station the irish language station and uh and just left alone to do its own thing and in in terms of programming, it must it must be Irish programming. They can't be buying fucking EastEnders and or British Soccer that's on the other channel for free. Abolish the TV license, of course. A uh, symbolically take down every wind farm in the country and build a nuclear build some nuclear power plants and reopen gas and electric power plants and uh, remove ourselves from all the carbon limits, all the international treaties on that. Even if that stuff was true, it's tiny island. We need energy security more than we need uh, fluffy feelings watching Greta Thunberg. And, that's, and, that, and good relationships with all the countries of the world. Not taking part in any alliances. True neutrality. True neutrality has never been practiced in Ireland. True neutrality is we're not taking part in any of your wars, but we have enough of a military to blow you to fucking bits if you try to try to invade us. So the Swedish or the Swiss model and the Norwegian model. And a secular, liberal state protecting religious freedom, ethnic minorities, protecting them, not giving them special privileges. Total abolition of NGOs that will all be then taken care of by the citizens' stewardship employment agency. And uh, if people get a regular job, they'll go off that national stewardship uh, pay and uh, if they take a part-time job it'll be deducted but it'll always be encouraged no one will go hungry uh, there will be a complete investigation of the real estate thing property developers especially uh, again if anyone is found in corruption if any planners were found in corruption with uh, property developers death penalty simple as that uh, you you see because what happens is if you don't do that I mean if you don't have the, the this uh, these these people have done tremendous damage there are people all over this country who don't have who are struggling to pay a mortgage or can't afford a home and want a nice home with a nice family even it's an apartment or something but because of planning and corruption by regulators and planners they've actually tortured millions of Irish people something as owning a home should be very basic and we will have oh and also i will uh, 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 before when when the democracy is restored i will turn doll air and leinster house government buildings into a museum of irish patriotism that every time a member of the government walks in that door, they will see the names, faces, images, statues and paintings of the people who died to give this country freedom. And they're never allowed to forget it. And that's it. That was, that's, that's, that's me in my dictatorial thing. Never happen. Uh, it won't, it's not, you know, it will never happen with anybody unless it's about me. But that's how I feel about it. A, a that's an anarchist society i've just described really that you have you know freedom of everything but you still have a court system that will hand out fines and punishment to the evil and the wicked and you still have a, a sense of safety 
and patriotism is not expressed by devotion to your government as it currently is in this awful democratic system but it's 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 defined by a love of your nation and your culture not in a jingoistic kind of like fuck you you know got kind of way but in a way like i know what i am and it's good enough for me and uh, i'm 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 respectful of other cultures and other everything else but they they're not coming they're not going to come here to take my culture away from me it's really quite simple it's really common sense and uh, imagine Ireland being like that, imagine England being like that, America. We had places that protected decency. You see, when you have the death penalty for corrupt politicians that took part in the COVID genocide or anything like that, it may seem brutal to actually put them before a firing squad. But these people have done evil, horrible things to decent, ordinary people in our countries. And... I'm sorry, they, they, they have led to countless numbers of deaths, even by means of suicide and depression. And they, they, you, you just cannot be allowed to get away with that. You know, we have serial killers in Irish government. They're literal serial killers, and, the polit and people are calling them by their first name like they're their mates. There was an attempted coup on humanity in 2020 this followed individual coups that took a place around the world in Ireland, the coup took took place in 2008 when the imf came in after a corrupt government ran the economy into the ground in order to buy elections the fianna fall party which would be outlawed forever and to anyone involved in that they will be retroactive prison sentences for them the ones that are still alive even if they live overseas remember i said we'll have our own Mossad. they'll go get them so if you're in Florida with your art gallery now, after you were Minister of Finance and wrecked the country in 2008, expect a, a visit on the side of the road one day and a, a, a surprise trip back, back home. You know, you're not going to get away with that because there's, there's, there's consequences to political mismanagement that leads to deaths of thousands of people whether it's about suicide or they're on medications to deal with depression or a breakup of families, uh, administered with, med with dangerous medications that haven't been tested. And politicians in the West, in the horrible democratic system, get away with this because they say, well, we're a democracy. Well, that's, democracy has to end now. It's over. It has to be replaced by benevolent dictatorship. And yes, summary executions and, well, there'll be trials for us for extreme pol corrupt politicians and vicious criminals is a kind, caring society because you're kind and caring to the people who deserve to be kind, who are doing the right thing in this society and in your society and all the others. So that's why I'm an anarchist and... Uh, in terms of running the economy anyway but yeah and then after 21 years you can have your democracy back but all the the scumbag families the nepotism will be all routed out by then it'll be a clean slate there'll be more checks and balances to prevent any kind of criminality happen again and uh, then you can go back to democracy that's what we need really more than anything else in the west is a, re a reformation of democracy and the only thing I, I see that can do that is benevolent dictatorships. That's the only way I can see it happening. Uh, democracy is just a machine for mediocrity, mediocrity, madness, and uh, psychopathology. It doesn't solve any of the pur purpose. And um, I think we'd have a better society and a better world if we all went down this road. It'll never happen. Uh, unless something like an EMP happened or a, you know, some great, a comet hit the earth or something that was only a few survivors. But uh, I, I have faith in the human race, but not unconditional faith. There'll always be criminals. And, you know, there's, there's no way the state should keep alive someone who has 46 convic convictions for burglary, including beating up two old people. You know, that, that's death, right? That, that's a death penalty right there and then. Simple as that, by firing squad. And uh, it, it, you, these people, someone like that should not be allowed to live. They can't be reformed. Someone who's, in, in, who's become involved in a corrupt political or, you know, 
commercial activity that's resulted in the deaths of thousands of people through everything from suicide, depression, to dangerous medication, they'd have to go as well. You can't, they can't be allowed, they have to understand that by the time democracy is restored, if they walk into government and they say, we're going to have a debate on this bill, will this bill lead to psychological damage of the society at some level? Yes, then we won't do it. And that's how to run a country. Right now we have a situation of politicians, like for instance, we have this picture in this country, a minister for justice who got in because her father killed himself or something like that. He died. And the usual Irish democracy thing, uh, sympathy vote, trying to bring in a hate speech law. And when an American tourist was nearly beaten to death in Dublin, she used as a photo op for herself. This is what democracy produces. The bottom of the barrel, the, you know, the Trudeaus in Canada, the Bidens in America, uh, the, you know, the, Everything in Britain, everything, in our, they're just the bottom of the barrel. And uh, lifelong politicians who just have been told and shown how to work the system by their parents or their uncles or not, we're already politicians. That all ends. That all ends. Democracy is, the more you think about democracy, the more disgusting it is. It's, it's absolutely horrible. I think a model nation that not, I, not perfectly, but someone, funny enough, who got it right was probably Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia under Tito, he stopped all the sectarian conflicts. He made a communist country, well, a socialist country, where people were allowed to own their own property, run businesses, and go on foreign holidays and didn't have, like, weren't, you know, weren't treated like, you know, by a constant, you know, the way they were in many other Eastern European countries. In the 1980s, Yugoslavia had a higher standard of living than capitalist Ireland. And uh, Tito died. The first thing they did was the Carrington, the rest of the European powers went in there and destroyed the country, stoked all the interactive conflicts because and then created from one con from one well, from one functioning dem dem one functioning dictatorship into what Serbia, Slovenia, uh, Croatia, Montenegro. Kosovo, five, did I get them on? And Bosnia-Herzegovina, six, six new democracies. And six new members of the, the I really do believe the reason why they, they smashed up uh, Yugoslavia is it would have been a powerful, it would have been a powerful country in the East. It would have been like France or Germany. They're a very talented and capable people in that part of the world. But the Western powers did to them what they did to Ireland smash it up so that's my crazy rant for today in my fantasy world that will never happen but uh, when you put it in the language that I put it in you really realize just how awful democracy is absolutely awful and and, and you're, you're, made, you're told and made to believe it's some kind of religious thing it's some kind of infallible spirit or oh, oh, democracy, democracy. It's not. It's, it's just. It's it's just like what what was his name? J.P. Dunleavy said, a parliament of horse. Love is all, bye.